Our last video for chapter two in section 2.7, again, just continuing um, this concept of solving inequalities. Um, in our previous video, we did addition and subtraction properties of equality. Now we're going to apply the multiplication and division properties of equality um, for these inequalities. Okay, and again, you can just pretend that these signs are all equal sign until the very end. And again, like I said in the last video, there's a couple instances where the properties of, of equality are a little bit different when you're working with inequalities. So we're going to demonstrate that in this video as well. So in our first um, example, we have 8 times x is greater than 72. So our goal is to get this x by itself so that we can graph it. So since it's being multiplied by an 8, we're going to divide by an 8 on both sides. So the 8s on the left are going to cancel out. And we'll be left with x is greater than, and then 72 divided by 8 is 9. So x is greater than 9. So pretty simple. So let's move on to our next one. Here we have our variables being multiplied by a negative number. So this is where you have to um, remember this rule. Okay, you have to remember this little this little rule when you're dealing with inequalities. Okay, so to get this u by itself, we have to divide by a negative five. So just remember, in other videos, we've talked about how that minus sign means change. So like on the number line, it means instead of going to the right, we're going to the left. It's changing direction. This is the same thing. This negative sign, because you're dividing or multiplying by a negative, it's going to change this sign. So just keep that in mind. We're going to divide by a negative 5 on both sides. These negative 5s are going to cancel. So we're going to be left with a u on one side and 65 divided by a negative 5 is a negative 13. So we remember our properties of integers. If you are um, dividing a positive and a negative integer, your quotient will be negative. So same thing with multiplying. If you're multiplying um, a positive and a negative integer, then your product or your result will be a negative. Now, because we had to divide by a negative 5, this used to be a greater than or equal to sign. But because we divided by a negative number, this sign is going to flip direction. So instead of having u is greater than negative 13, we're going to have u is less than or equal to negative 13. So that's the trick you need to remember, that if you divide or multiply by a negative number, in an inequality, then the sign is going to flip. So remember that negative means change. So we got to just flip that sign. So let's do that one more time in our next problem. We have negative 25 is uh, less than p divided by a negative 5. So to get this p by itself, we're going to multiply by a negative 5 on both sides. So multiply by a negative 5. These negative 5s are going to cancel out, leaving a p on this side. And negative 5 times a negative 25. So remember our rules of integers. And negative times a negative will equal a positive. So 5 times 25 is just going to equal 125. And because we multiplied by a negative number, this less than sign is going to flip and become a greater than sign. So just keep that in mind when you're using your properties of equality. It's all the same until you multiply or divide by a negative number. Whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number on both sides, that means you flip the sign. So, and then um, you would certainly go ahead and graph these out and write it in interval notation. And so we've had um, some examples on that in the previous videos, but this is just to demonstrate um, that, that rule you need to remember when you're working with inequalities. So just remember, when you're dividing or multiplying by a negative number, remember to flip that sign so that you can graph it correctly and get the correct interval notation.